lives. But um, he was able to keep my mind through this also. Now there's an you interesting know? portion to your story. And at one point, she took you. Now she should have been the one going to the mental hospital. Yes. But at one point, she dropped you off or took you to well, a mental hospital? Well, see, I had told my dad. Oh, you told your father. I finally told him. She took a chair, and it didn't break. Okay. So it just about killed me when she hit me with this oak chair. Uh -huh. Okay. I mean, she just literally tried to. So one chair did break, and the other chair didn't. The chair did not break. Okay. <laughs> I went down to the floor okay. thinking I was dead. Now I'm naked oh my because God. she loved to beat me naked, uh -huh. you see. And uh, it was because the razor strap flew from her hand that mm. she grabbed the chair. So oh, I grabbed Lord. her foot. I, when I hit the floor, all I saw was a foot. So I grabbed it. Mm -hmm. She fell. Mm -hmm. I scooped up my clothes, and I ra literally ran out the house naked and bleeding. Mm -hmm. Okay? I got dressed in some bushes. Mm -hmm. She came out in the car looking for me. I ran, and I hid, and I slid and slithered through the uh, dirt and behind bushes until she had passed me. And then uh, I went to a spot where there was, uh, we lived in uh, Windsor Hills. I was going to say, yeah, and mention, and this is not a woman, like you said, this was a professional woman. Oh, yes. This was not yes. somewhere, as Miss we Black all talk Beverly about. Hills. Yeah, we're, we're not talking about in, in, in Harlem or in the ghetto or in the, no. you know, this is uptown. Yes. People living, we're talking here. Yeah. High on the hog living. Yes. You know? oh. Olympiad Drive. Oh. Uh, my neighbors were Ike and Tina Turner. I played with the kids. We were all friends. Ray Charles lived around the corner. Uh, Ron Glass lived across the street about four or five houses down. And no one so probably knew about this abuse. Oh, no. Until you ran out the house, of course. Yeah, I didn't see anyone out there. Okay, good. <laughs> Went well, straight to running. the bushes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was flying. I was <laughs> okay. running for my dear little life, okay. you know. And I got dressed in the bushes. I went looking for a sheriff officer that used to play catch with us. Okay. He'd always nail us for running stop signs on our bikes. Mm -hmm. But then when we were playing football in the street, he'd actually pull his car over. Now we're thinking we're in trouble because mm -hmm. we used to run them intentionally just to see if he was there. Okay. And... Uh, He'd hit his siren and yell something obscene at us, you know, about running his stop sign. <laughs> okay. We just thought that was, yes, okay, we right. got him. But uh, he'd get out and he'd throw a couple of long bombs, go long, go long. He was a nice guy. So I, I knew where he hid. There was a stop sign where he'd hide to catch the cars okay. and us. Okay. And so I went there. He wasn't there. Okay. So then I had a highway patrolman where I knew where he would hide, waiting on this light. The people liked to, it was a long light, and people liked to run it when there weren't any cars coming. So did you find him? He wasn't there either. So I went, walked all the way down to Southwest Division of the Los Angeles Police Department. Mm -hmm. I showed him my back, mm -hmm. okay? I told him I can't go back home now that I've told them. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously I can't go home, but I wasn't going back. I had made mm -hmm. up in my mind and what that did was she it. Do? What happened then? They told me if I didn't get home, I'd probably get another whooping. Oh, Lord. So no help there. Okay. So I had seven cent in my pocket. I'll never forget it. I went to Crenshaw Shopping Center. My dad's office was in the uh, Crenshaw Medical Arts Center on okay. Santa Rosalia. So they had a uh, Savons in there. I went in. I bought a pencil for four cent. Okay. Went back there, sharpened it for free. <laughs> went out into the parking lot, found an old brown paper bag, and I wrote a goodbye note to my dad. Mm -hmm. You know, I, and I put on there that I can't take it anymore. I'm mm -hmm. not going back there. She'd been beating me for years. Mm -hmm. She had me sworn to secrecy not to tell him mm -hmm. and that I can't go back, so I'm running away. Okay. So my next plan was to get it to him without him getting to me mm -hmm. to stop me. So how I'm, did she end up getting to you, taking you to a mental hospital? Because he took me home. His nurse caught me before I could get to the elevator. I slid the note under his door mm -hmm. in the nurse area. Mm -hmm. And she got it, got that door open and got to me before I could get, get on that elevator. So then once they took you home. He took me home. And I, much, I told him, I, well, you can't take me back here. I'm mm -hmm. not going back. Now that I've told you, she'll kill me. Okay. You know, and he took me back. Okay. And uh, he said, nothing will happen to you. He had never taken a day off from work. Okay. 
But this day he took off. Mm -hmm. Now, not the whole day, mind you, which scared the daylights out of me. Mm -hmm. He dropped me off there, more or less, but he mm -hmm. told her, you are not to touch him. Okay. Don't say a word to him. Mm -hmm. I don't care what he does. Mm -hmm. Don't touch him again. Now, I'm listening through the heater vent in my room, right. trying to hear if I'm going to live through this night. Right. You know? And she never came up the stairs. So how and did she end up went taking by, you? Okay. A few days went by. Okay. And then she uh, came into my room. Okay. And I was making lanyards. Okay. And she told me, how would you like to go to a place where a bunch of boys like you oh. are having fun? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. Oh, no, she did And didn't. I'm such a... Oh, yeah. No. Naive little kid. <laughs> I don't know anything. We're not allowed out of the house. You can't have Lord. company. So I don't know what she set right. me up for. Right, right. So I go, well, I'd like that very much. Of and course. I'm thinking to myself, especially if you're nowhere around, right. you know. She says, okay, well, we're going to a courtroom tomorrow, and the judge is going to ask you if you're incorrigible. Incorrigible means you want to go to this place where all the boys are having fun, they eat candy, they have a wonderful time, and you're going to love it. So when he asks you, are you incorrigible, you say, yes. yes. You see how she got me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I got there, mm -hmm. it was Camarillo State Hospital. Mm -hmm. I'm in the mental ward. Mm -hmm. I mean, I held on to the doors. They mm -hmm. had security and everybody. My dad's dropping me off. Mm -hmm. He had tears in his eyes because we well, can see mm -hmm. what's going on right. in this hallway. There's people rocking right. and slobbering and in wheelchairs, and there's a lot of special people there. Mm -hmm. And I knew I didn't belong there. I'm like, Dad, <laughs> we're at the wrong place. Mm. And he goes, no, this is it. And I said, Dad, look at these people, you know. Hmm. I'm not crazy. How and long I, were you in the mental ward? They actually released me the day I was there. Okay. They, I begged they them. I kept told her. them. <laughs> I told them. I said, I'm not crazy. My mother's trying to kill me. Okay. And she's abused me, and I took off my shirt. But, but and now we're halfway through the program. What I want to get to oh. is that God took care of you. Wasn't there someone there who took you sort of away from there and put you in a separate room to kind of protect you from these yes. crazy people? Yes, his name was Clark. I always thought of him as like Clark Kent. Okay. He became a sheriff helicopter pilot. Okay. Okay. But yeah, he guarded me. He kept me away from the really notorious. There were child molesters. There were... Uh, kids who had killed, mm -hmm. young adults who had killed murderers, mm -hmm. you know. There were actually mentally insane people in there, but there were a lot of abusers, a lot of sexual and she abusers. she dropped you off. I can't, that is such, it just yeah. breaks my heart. Well, I know why. She couldn't kill me. There you go. So she figured this place would kill me. But little did she know, and I definitely didn't know at the time, that God's hand was upon me. me. That's right. See, I didn't know God, nor could I believe there was a God. Well, if there is a God, he certainly was watching a train wreck in China because he didn't see what she just did to me. With the chair, huh? No. The chair. Lord, so what for, led you up? When did you start using drugs? Immediately upon leaving home at 18. Went off to college. But you say leaving home. Does that mean that after the mental ward, did they take you back to your home? No. With your oh, you no, went to No, they wouldn't home. take me back home. That's okay. I actually was in the mental ward for three months. Okay, and then where did, did and they he, find my a dad had home? to pay for it because okay. I was released the first day, and the state wasn't going to pay for my existence. Did there. they find you a new home? A new home, Boys okay. Town of the Desert in okay. Beaumont, California. Okay, good. It was like a home run by Catholic Church and okay. Catholic brothers, okay. and um, a lot of rough kids. Okay. Kids, I wasn't used to now. I had okay. just left the nut house and okay. some cycles. Oh, Lord. <laughs> now I'm going to halfway between juvenile hall and home. Okay. All right. So fights every day, okay. defending yourself, fighting for your life. Okay. Uh, racial things there going on. Okay. Between Mexicans, whites, and blacks. It was so tough. So you lived through that. Lived through that. And at now, 18. she knew she'd nail me with that one. Okay. So no way he'll come out of this alive. <laughs> so at 18. Thank God I did. You're, you're out of there. I came out at 15, went to high school, Lutheran High School, okay. where I met my very, very best friend, Edward Potter. Now, see, he didn't know I was transitioning from incarceration to back to society. Hmm. See, this is my first touch with normal people, okay. quote unquote, normal people. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, after these years of the hospital and this boys' town. Who introduced you to drugs? 
Oh, it was my, it was a friend of mine in high school that Edward knew also. Mm -hmm. uh, he was part of our trio, I guess you would.